Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today, we are finally going to attempt an expendable core mission, landing two side boosters on the two drone ships out on the ocean. Now, today we are testing a 55 ton payload, which is around the weight that the Falcon Heavy should be able to push to low Earth orbit, assuming that we are expending the central core. That means we're going to totally run that central core out of fuel. You'll see here I have a bunch of food on top of this payload, along with a uh, water purification unit and a CO2 extractor. That is something that we may need in the future. So we are launching the Falcon Heavy now. And what you may see here is that we have the Falcon Heavy here decked out with the Block 5 textures. Now, I would like to uh, just send a special thanks to the creators of the Launchers Pack for such an awesome model here. And also a special thanks to Spacebird, who has been helping specifically with these additional Block 5 textures. I think you'll all agree that we would like to see this in real life very, very soon. As with the real Falcon Heavy mission, we have throttled the central core right down to its minimum thrust value, around 40% thrust on the central core. That just means that the central core is going to drain its fuel much slower than the two side boosters. This is a full-scale simulation using the game Kerbal Space Program. It's using all of the Realism Overhaul mods to ensure that we can keep this simulation as accurate as possible. We have a real-scale Earth here, real-scale Moon, which we're going to be landing on here soon. And also, just like in real life, there's several challenges that we need to overcome to be able to land boosters at such a high velocity on the two drone ships in the ocean. One of those today is just read the instructions and the other, of course, I still love you. So I've got those stationed out here in the ocean ready and waiting for the two side boosters to come down. Just passing 1000 meters per second here now, we are going to be getting a much higher velocity than we saw with the real demo flight of the Falcon Heavy. This is because we're going to be landing these side boosters on the drone ship, not actually returning them to land. So they've got a little more thrust available to them. With the 55 ton payload, I was able to get this to around 1900 meters per second, just to allow me enough fuel to land the two side boosters. So we'll, we'll see that in a minute. It was actually a little bit of a hairy landing because it is a very high velocity landing for the side boosters. And there we go, decoupling those two side boosters there. We're now going to put that feed up in the top left so you can actually watch two tiny little corrections. Just doing a very small correction with the central engines just to make sure that their trajectories are going to bring them just over the top of the two drone ships. Now what we need to do with these is make sure that we're overshooting the drone ships by quite a bit because we can use the grid fins to actually steer the booster down and change its trajectory on the way down as it's passing over the top of those drone ships. So that's going to be really cool to see here in a second. Meanwhile, the central core here is just getting up to around 3,000 meters per second, much faster than we would have had the boosters going at this stage. And we're going to be able to get up around 4,500 meters per second before we decouple that central core. Just coming up to that value around about now. And uh, there we go, we are now out of fuel, decoupling stage two, and almost immediately we can now ditch these fairings here, which uh, are not going to help us at all now that we are this far out of the atmosphere, almost past that 140 kilometer mark now. Switching back to our side boosters while stage two continues on its merry way and the central core booster burns up in the atmosphere, we are now watching our two side boosters come down over the top of the drone ship. You can see the surface speed we have here is around ooh, getting close there to 1800 meters per second now. These need to slow down quite considerably before they hit the atmosphere, otherwise a lot of the engines will burn up just as in real life. The idea here is to reduce our velocity to around 1400 meters per second just as we pass the 55 kilometer mark as we enter the thicker part of the atmosphere. And there we go, those burns are already complete. This is the point where the grid fins take over. They are going to control the two boosters very accurately to come over the drone ship. They're getting pretty close to each other though. That was that was actually fairly lucky that they didn't run into each other there. A very high re-entry speed there as we plummet down over the top of the drone ships. And you can see the grid fins tilting the rocket to reduce all of that horizontal velocity and steer the vessels right down over the top of the drone ship. The engine burns have started, three engine 
engine burn, switching to the single engine burn, just coming over the top of the drone ship, and there we go, touchdown, both of them on the two separate drone ships. That <laughs> that was just awesome. Uh, that uh, that took a lot of practice and a lot of attempts. And uh, for those of you that follow me on Twitter, you probably saw some of my frustration there. Switching back to the stage two, which is still on its way to orbit, just passing around 5,900 meters per second here now, and it needs to get right up just shy of 8,000 meters per second, just around 7,800 meters per second or so. So still quite a way to go, and you'll see we are pitching up quite a long way there on the nav ball, up around 24. Five degrees. That is because we need to make sure that we stop from falling back into the atmosphere because the thrust to weight on this single engine is actually quite low, uh, especially until we get up around six and a half thousand meters per second, which we're almost there now. And you'll see our apoapsis is just climbing back up above where we're currently at in our trajectory. You'll see I have scripted this to just pitch up or down depending on how close we are to our time to apoapsis and that essentially is just because we want to stay with our apoapsis right on us just so that when we finally hit orbital velocity our circularization happens quite accurately so that's why I'm sort of waving up and it actually looks a little bit stupid that I'm pitching up and down like that but it, uh, it isn't losing us uh, really any efficiency we're just trying to keep that time to apoapsis just close to zero there. Just keep in mind that we are pushing the full 55 ton payload to orbit. The fully expendable version of the Falcon Heavy is only supposed to get around uh, 63, 64 tons to orbit. So this is the majority of that payload only just losing that central core and we've just hit orbital velocity there, engine cut off, our final apoapsis there up around 400 kilometers and our periapsis at around 176 kilometers. So the idea here is to pop out the solar panels which we've just done, make sure that we're getting some good charge on our payload and we can now decouple our stage two and prepare it for our translunar injection burn. The translunar injection burn, of course, is a manoeuvre used to get our spacecraft here on a trajectory that's going to cause it to arrive at the moon at the right time. And what we want to do here, you'll see me sort of playing around with what's called manoeuvre nodes in the simulation here, is uh, basically just trying to uh, get our spacecraft to uh, come in over the moon on a polar orbit. And that was simply because I chose uh, some pretty poor times to actually do the launch. That uh, doesn't really matter though, as long as we can actually intercept with the moon, we can land at the previous landing location from the last video. If you haven't seen that video, check that out up in the top right here. This is essentially a video where we recovered all of the boosters and got a payload all the way up to the moon. Much less payload than what we've got here today, but uh, nonetheless, it was a lot of fun to do that mission, so check that out. The translunar injection burn is now complete. That was a burn of around 3,000 meters per second to get us all the way up here to pass nearby to the moon. And we can just watch the Earth there falling away from us very majestically. What we're going to be doing next is a mid-course correction burn, and that's going to get us right down to come in very close to the moon's surface. The reason why we want to do that out here is because our velocity is much lower and we can do our course correction using much less delta V. So we're just ditching the empty stage there, and we're going to be going now just with the lunar lander. A very small burn here of only around uh, 90 meters per second or so, just to bring our trajectory right down to around 400 kilometers from the surface of the moon in a polar orbit. That means we're going to be orbiting from north to south, letting the moon there rotate underneath us very slowly. It's going to take 27 days to do one full rotation. We won't need to wait that long, but we do need to wait long enough for our previous landing spot from the last video to come down underneath us. And you'll see here I'm just preparing our circularization burn. What we need to do is wipe off enough velocity to circularize around the moon. This is a burn just over 800 meters per second, a fairly hefty burn but we should have the delta V needed to land on the surface here, no problem. I calculated it exactly, and I put enough mass on the top of this vessel here to ensure that the entire 55 ton would uh, only just get us to the moon. For those of you that are playing the stock Kerbal Space Program, you can really get a big sense of just how much higher the velocities are in real life. Orbital velocity for the moon 
as an example is over 1500 meters per second. Now compare that to the stock game where the moon there has an orbital velocity around 540 meters per second. So, you know, over three times the amount. And then if you compare the Earth to Kerbin, you're looking at around 2200 meters per second versus 8000 meters per second. So very, very big differences there. So we are now circularized in a low moon orbit. We just now need to wait for our landing spot to uh, come down underneath us. So uh, just preparing ourselves for this landing will bring our periapsis right down to around 80 odd kilometers there from the surface, bringing that down there now. Now, because the thrust to weight ratio of this vessel is very low, we need to be very careful with our landing burn timing. And that is essentially because we need to cut the last little bit of horizontal velocity from our trajectory just as we're passing over the top of our landing target. Um, that is actually quite difficult. It's actually more difficult to do this manually than you would think because uh, the landing burn time is so long. It takes you know, around five minutes or so to fully do the landing burn. So uh, yeah, quite tricky to get that timing correct. I did, uh, I did have a few crash attempts at this, I will say. I'm flying all this manually, of course. Uh, the actual Falcon Heavy landings and uh, the ascent was all done by my programmed scripts using the Kerbal Operating System mods for those of you that are interested. Um, loads more tutorials on all that sort of stuff if you want to check that out in the playlist in the top right here. I have had a lot of requests from you guys actually um, just lately asking if I can provide the Kerbal Operating System scripts. Now, I do intend to provide those, uh, but my scripting, just because it's been such a huge amount of work over quite a few months, my scripts are just horribly organized and I would be embarrassed to release them that way. So I am working on tidying all those up and rewriting them as we speak so I can eventually provide them. So thanks everyone for your patience with that. Just coming down here for our landing burn, very, very close to our target after quite a few attempts. Um, just coming down here, we'll just cut the engines there and just do a final suicide burn just at the end. There we go. And one little last burst, just a touchdown, and there we go, it landed on the surface of the moon, only 264 meters from the ship from our previous mission. Just so that you can see the difference in scale for these two, I've just hacked the two vessels together and just placed them in this cutscene, just so you can sort of see the difference there. You can see the uh, the previous vessel only had one of the engines, whereas this has got three of those, so three times more thrust. And that's because it needs it, because it's got a lot more mass to it, more fuel to push, and of course a much bigger storage payload. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do take a second, hit that like button. All of your support is just so awesome. If you have any questions for me, whack them down in the comments below. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have the previous mission where we landed all three boosters. In the top right is my latest video, and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has chosen just for you by some sad little robot. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.